All right, quick video today, but I want to talk about version history in Tinkercad because yes, you can go back to earlier versions of your projects. So what you're seeing here is sped up footage. I'm recreating my Apple TV project, or at least the first few steps of it, and show you what version history looks like because you might want to go back to an earlier version of your project, whether because you want to start again at a certain point, or maybe you want to grab a certain part or piece from that project, from that particular point, or maybe you just want to do something like get a specific measurement of an earlier shape that has since been buried in the current version of your project. Well, you want to go back to an earlier version, you can do that using version history in Tinkercad. And this is how you do it. All right, I really just quickly retraced some of the steps in my last project, but I wanted to get far enough along so I could try to show you this thing called version history in Tinkercad. For this, you can go back to a specific point in your project, and that's fantastic, but you can't do it in this screen. You actually have to go and back out and get back to your project screen. And we're here, and this is the project here. In fact, you can do this for any one of your projects or your designs. And you'll notice that you have this little icon here that looks like a gear. It's called Design Actions. When you click on this, you'll see a number of different options, including Duplicate, and there is your version history. If you click on version history, you're going to have some drop down fields here along the side. And if you click on this, it will open up all the different times in that day that you worked on your project. And these are times that you can select. Now, if you've gone multiple days, you'll see the days listed, and then you'll be able to open up those days and again, see the different versions that occurred on that day. So let's go back and let's take a look at what it looked like back at 9.42 a.m. That's the project there. And it gives you a preview in this window and it allows you to zoom in, zoom out. You can check out if there's a specific detail or something that you want to look for in this version, you can do that in this window, which is fantastic. And if you found the version that you want to go back to or restore, just go ahead and click restore. So what I like about this is that it creates a duplicate of that version rather than just simply bringing your project back to that specific version. So you don't lose your original project and where it is. You just simply create a duplicate of that previous version that you found. Now when you click on it, and there it is there, you can open this up. And there is that previous version, and it is a duplicate from my original project. Now another place where you can see this option to look at version history is when you actually click on your object, you're also going to see that same design actions icon there in the top right. And you can look at the version history there as well for your project. So this is a great tool, especially if you want to get back to a specific point in your project. And it could be for a variety of reasons. You might just want to recall or get a specific part or shape that you want to then copy and bring back into your original project. You can certainly do that. Sometimes you might just want to get to a specific measurement of a piece or a shape. Whatever the case, you have the ability to do that using version history in Tinkercad. The only downside to this is that it does require you to go through lists and lists of versions when you're looking at your version history. And for this, I did not spend a long time making this project and already I've accumulated quite a number of versions in this one single project. Right now I have 83 versions from this one simple project that I've just started here. It may require you to hunt and pick if you don't know the exact time where you had the version that you're looking for, it can get a little tedious. Here's the other thing too, once you do restore this, it's great that it creates a duplicate, but if you wanted to take an element from your previous version and bring it into your current project, it does require you to open up one project, click Tinker This, find that piece that you're looking for, let's say it's this one right here at the bottom, I could then copy that, but then if I wanted to bring that into my other project, I would have to basically exit out of this, open up the other project, or if I have it in a different tab, I'd have to tab over to that current project and paste it here. So again, very doable.
but it might get a little bit frustrating when you're trying to hunt and pick and try to find that specific version and then trying to bring back certain elements or shapes from that previous version into your current project. But while we're on this topic, here is something that I do. And I'm not going to say that this is something you should do instead of looking at version history, but it's something that I've started doing for my projects. So here's what I tend to do. Let's retrace the steps I just took for this recreation of my Apple TV project here. And rather than rely on version history, I tend to make duplicates of my work and then set them to the side so that I can quickly refer to them later if I need to. For this part, I was trying to create the cutout for my Apple TV container. Now, this is a very important part that I might want to refer to later. So then what I do is I just make a duplicate or control D and I just take that and I set that off to the side. That's kind of my process. And then after that, I can just go ahead and continue building. But if I ever need to refer back to this cutout, I can get to it. And where or when I decide to make duplicates is really up to me, but I often do it at certain points where I feel like that this is something that I might want to get back to later, or maybe I'm taking a chance on my design here and I'm not quite sure if it's going to work. So I'll just make a duplicate now, just in case I can always get back to this point and start again. Or maybe this is a part that I might need later on again because maybe it's a repetitive piece. So I just make a duplicate, set it off to the side, knowing that I can get back to it really easily if I need to. Now, the other thing about this is that as you move forward, sometimes I start to forget what these pieces actually represent or why I actually made a copy of this particular piece. So sometimes I need to give a bit of a reminder. And this is where the notes feature on Tinkercad can come in handy here. It's N or what we call the notes tool. And by clicking on this, I can just set a note down on one of these objects. And you can see here that it prompts you to enter in some text. So I'm going to call this Apple TV cutout. And that's it right there. Hit the minus button and it's just marking this particular object that I have here on the side. Clicking on the note will expand and show you the text that you entered in there again. Minus will hide it. If you ever want to delete it, you can certainly click on the text and then you'll see that you have the option there to put it in the trash and delete the note altogether. You can move the note around and something that I wish didn't happen, but the note itself, when you put it down on an object, it is not attached to the object because I can take this and I can move this object and the note is left behind. So the note doesn't follow the object, unfortunately. I wish it did, but just something that you should be aware of. But I use it really to label these duplicates that I have set off to the side here just to remind myself what these duplicates represent or why I even made a duplicate at that particular point in my project. So this is the completed Tinkercad file for my Apple TV mount project, my work area here, all the duplicates that I've made as I went through this project, starting off with just the basic shapes. But as I started developing this, making the base plate, putting them together, realizing that I needed to realign it and make adjustments to this mount, it was nice being able to quickly go back to earlier versions that I had on the side because I had made duplicates along the way and allowed me to quickly make adjustments without having to leave my work plane. Now, this is obviously not for everyone and there are definitely some drawbacks to this if this is something that you might want to do. The first one is, is that obviously it takes up a lot of space because as I make more and more duplicates, it just clutters up the work area that I have around the work plane. And if you have a fairly large project that already spills outside of the work plane, these things can get in the way and you may have to move them around. The other issue comes up when I use Sketch. For Sketch Tool users, you might find this to be really quite annoying. Let's throw down a sketch on the front surface of this Apple TV mount here. Let's place it like that. Now this is the problem. You can see here, that because I have all of these objects in the periphery, they also show up in the silhouetted images in the background of my sketch here and my sketch palette or whatever you want to call this. And it's not just the objects behind it. It's also the objects, if I finish the sketch and get out, 
it's also the objects in front of it. So it's these objects here that are in front of my piece there where I put my sketch. Uh, these objects also show up in my sketch palette. So if you really rely on the silhouetted images of the different objects as a bit of a reference, this becomes problematic. You're probably going to have to move these objects out of the way so that you have a clear view of your reference object in your sketch. So there are some definite drawbacks to my method of using duplicates, but right now it is the method that works for me and I prefer this over using something like version history. But it's up to you. It's whatever works for you. I am kind of curious as to whether or not this is something really unique. I have a feeling other people do this. I don't think this is really that unusual, making duplicates and putting them off to the side. So if you do something similar or maybe you do something else completely different that helps you organize your projects, let us know in the comments below because I'm really curious as to how people organize themselves in and around Tinkercad and their Tinkercad projects. All right. Until next time, take care. We'll see you later.